Hi everyone, my name is Alice from Discover AI. At Discover AI, we specialize in Power BI for the environmental and water industry. In this short video, I want to explore a new feature of the Azure Map Visual for Power BI, the ability to have interactive reference layers. So if you're watching this sometime in the future, this video um, I've recorded when the feature has just been released in October 2024. So let's have a look at what we can do with it now. Here you can see we've got the Azure Map Visual and I have a reference layer which I've added into it. Now this reference layer is interactive. You can see that I can um, highlight different basins on my map here using the slicer and this interacts with other visuals within the report. So if I select one of the basins from the map itself, you can see that other visuals, such as this card visual, they also update. So this is really cool. This is a really big enhancement. Previously, we could have reference layers in the Azure map, but they were static. So they weren't um, interactive with our data and we couldn't do things like conditional formatting or have report page tooltips. So let's now take a look at how we can create dynamic reference layers using the Azure map visual. So let's start from scratch. What I'm going to do is insert the Azure map onto our report canvas. So it's this visual right here. And to make um, our reference layers interactive, what we need to do is bring um, the field uh, which we're going to bind to our, our reference layer into the location field of the visual. So this will be the basin name. So if I bring this in here, you can see that it tries to plot uh, points for me um, based on the names of these basins. So I might have done a pretty good job here, uh, but I'm just going to toggle toggle this off. And what we want to do is we want to um, link this in to a reference layer. So we can either upload a file or use a URL as well. I'm going to upload a file. And the file types we've got available to us are um, GeoJSON, shapefile as a zipped folder, KML or text file, so CSV or WKT. For this example, I'm going to upload a zipped uh, folder which contains all the files required for my shape file here. So I'm just going to upload this one. And you can see it's as easy as that. Here, if I select my basin name, you can see that the data, um, the slicer filters the map. So we can do conditional formatting um, on these uh, polygons or lines or points uh, within our reference files. You can see that we can make it dynamic using conditional formatting. Here I might do some really simple formatting just based on uh, maybe the area in hectares. Um, of the of the catchment. I don't want to configure any rules. I might just do a really simple gradient for this example. Add a middle color if we want, just so we can see the spread. So there we can see that we can um, uh, format the colors um, of the polygons based on certain rules. You can also change the color of the unmapped object. So if uh, you had um, a polygon within your shapefile which wasn't mapped to the data, then um, we could change the color of the unmapped ob objects. So this is useful if we're using slices to filter the data. Um, you can see the unmapped objects uh, just have this default blue color. So if we want to change that, you can use a custom color. I might use gray with a white border. So you can see that this is, um, this is changing the color of the unmapped objects. 
If we hover over the visual, we can see that we've also got tooltips, which is really cool. We could configure a poor page tooltips for this if we wanted. Um, so there's a lot of uh, potential and possibility. For those of you who are unfamiliar with spatial files and you're wondering, how does that data mapping work? Um, you saw that we brought in the basin name um, here into the visual and the location field well, and it just magically picks up that connection. So I'll show you behind the scenes um, what we have to uh, match up essentially. So here I've got my shape file. Um, a shape file is a spatial file. It consists of uh, lots of different individual files. One of those is a database file, so the .dbf. And these files we can actually open up in Excel. So I've just opened up Excel here. I'm just going to drag it in and have a look at it. So this is the data which sits behind the spatial file in its attribute table. You can see here that we've got um, a column for base and name, and it has all these values here. So this is what is uh, being matched up to uh, when we're bringing that data into our location field well in Power BI. So Power BI is essentially searching our spatial file and anywhere in the attribute table that contains that uh, matching key, it's matching it up. So just a couple of gotchas um, for you to be aware of. I've only done a really quick test of this this morning, but this is what I found um, when I was just playing and clicking around with it. If we want to plot polygons or a reference file and points, then be aware that the location field is used to split the latitude and longitude fields. So what do I mean by this? Um, we've brought location field, oh, we brought basin name into our location field well, and that's to um, map to our reference layer so that we can make our reference layer interactive. Within this same Power BI file, I also have latitude and longitude points um, for reservoirs, which are located across the state. If we just have a look at this um, in its own Azure Map Visual really quick, we'll see where they're plotting. You can see that we've got lots of different um, reservoirs. And if I bring the base of name into the legend here, you can see that sometimes we have multiple reservoirs within the same basin. However, if I bring, if I want to plot those reservoirs on this same map here with the basins, if I bring latitude and longitude, and then if I turn on my bubble map as well, uh, you can see that it's, uh, that it has uh, changed the data. So it's not matching up some of these um, basins which don't have uh, reservoirs inside of them. They're saying they're unmatched um, areas. Also, it's plotting the average latitude and longitude within those basins. So it's not actually the reservoir location itself. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, maybe we could get a bit tricky and, uh, and trick it. And um, here we could show items with no data potentially. Uh, but that's just something to be aware of. So if you are having interactive reference layers, I probably use them by themselves without trying to plot uh, the points. So another thing that I did notice is if we are just wanting to use this map to have um, interactive reference layers and not plot points as well, uh, the auto zoom doesn't work. So here, if I click on one of the basins or a couple of them, it might be nice to zoom into these basins. Um, but you can see that that feature wasn't working as we would expect. If we have a look under the map settings, you can see that we do have auto zoom turned on, but it's not zooming into the data itself. You can see when we turn it off, that it automatically zooms out to the world. So um, what I'd probably recommend doing is probably locking the zoom onto your map um, where your reference layer falls. But hopefully this is something 
that um, the team will look at in the future and they might improve it. My last point just to be aware of is that these reference layers are not added to the map legend. You can see that when we have no latitude and longitude um, fields and we have nothing in the legend, uh, we can't toggle on the legend. So for this map, I've actually um, symbolized the color based on, I think I chose hectares, so the base and size. If we try bringing that into legend, um, then you can see that the legend here, it's displaying that it's not using the same um, symbology that I set up for my reference layer. So here we set up um, conditional formatting previously, uh, but if we bring a field into the legend and we want to have a map legend, uh, then it takes away this ability. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, if you wanted to use a conditional formatting, you might have to have one of those workaround uh, Power BI tricks to insert your own legend. But that said, I think um, this is a really fantastic feature. It's really great to see the ability to have um, interactive reference layers within the Azure Map Visual. I think this is the team um, bringing in some of that functionality that we saw was possible in the Shape Map Visual. So they're trying to create Azure Maps to be um, the one stop shop for mapping in Power BI. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found this useful for your study. Um, feel free to reach out and connect with us on all the socials um, or have a look at our blog and YouTube um, sites for more tips and tricks on how to visualize your environmental data in Power BI.